All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, this episode of Campfire. It's a very, very special episode today. Uh, I have the immense pleasure to have Chris Helm with us. Uh, I just posted a, a short note on our Discord server. And uh, Chris, I want to start with by saying thank you for your service. Um, you've, um, well, actually, I'll, I'll let you uh, talk about uh, your, your background and and how you got started in the Marine Corp. Um, this is going to be very special because you've had a very inspiring story, uh, uh, really starting with the Marine Corp and then moving up into tech, uh, having had multiple jobs in the software industry, and and uh, also very recent, uh, not recently teaching for us, but recently being also a career coach with us. Uh, so... With that, with that introduction, please allow uh, the audience to uh, know about you. Like, would you mind starting with, uh, you know, who you are, where you live, uh, where are you uh, dialing in from, uh, and and we'll we'll actually then go back in time and, and talk about your, you know, back when you were in high school, your education, and and talk about your journey. Uh, well, hello, uh, I'm Chris Helm. Um, I live in a suburb. Um, of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and uh, that was a lot of questions there. Let me see where I started. Well, <laughs> it was 1982 when I was born. Uh, no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking. Like my sister. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't, I, I don't come from the uh, stereotypical traditional tech background. Um, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't a, uh, I wasn't like a computer nerd or something in high school like that. Um, I liked computers, but it, it, it nothing to do with coding. You know, no one in my family was in tech, anything like that. I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, take calculus and, and physics or anything like that. A lot of people think that you have to come from this like uh, like ultra nerdy background in order to have a career in tech. And I use the uh, word nerd in a good way. I always call my students nerds. Um, if they're on here, they know I always say nerd. I'm a nerd. Um, so nerd is nerd a, is very nice. It's very positive. Nerd. I'm a nerd myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nerds, run, nerds run the world. It's a good word. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I wasn't like some super nerd or high school in high school or anything like that. And um, I actually, uh, I was a wrestler. I was a national champion wrestler. And oh. I had like full scholarships, to, uh, you know, to go to college, to wrestle and um, I did college for like a semester. I said, this is absolutely boring. And uh, I wanted some excitement in my life. So I decided to go to the uh, my, my mall and I went to the Marine Corps recruiter. Yeah. And I said, how fast can I leave? And uh, they said, you can leave in nine days. So that's how I ended up going from high school to the Marine Corps. And uh yeah. Do you want me to keep going or do you no, want me to let me, let me, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let, me pause, yeah. let me pause here. Uh, it's a great intro and we'll get into it. I want to yeah. say hi first to the field folks that are joining us. Uh, it's really good to see everyone. Uh, Andrew is here. Hello, Andrew. Ken is here as well. Dan, I don't know why we are talking about my cardigan Muslim operator cheetah. What is that? Is that in the thumbnail that was sent around? I don't know. Hey, Krista, good to see you. Snow Hamish, that's pretty close to where I live. Uh, lots of people here. It's great. Yes, yeah, still a fab cardigans. Okay. Um, so folks from Honolulu, that's awesome as well. We're going to have a big news for, for those folks pretty soon. Uh, all right. Tons of people here. All right. Charlie's here, Victoria. So if you're here, you're probably joining from one of those three places, YouTube, LinkedIn, or what's the third one? Facebook. There you go. So we're streaming on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. If you want to ask your questions, and I see plenty of people are doing it here, uh, chances are you have a chat window uh, on any of those platforms. And so we're going to be able to see those here and answer any of your questions. Uh, wow. It's uh, lots of people today. It's pretty cool to see. So um, Chris, we'll take the questions that they come in, uh, and, and especially if, uh, if they really relate to your experience and background. You, you mentioned that you, you really disliked college very quickly uh, and that you decided to do co something completely uh, uh, different. 
Uh, let me, and I, I don't know if you want to get into, you know, what you did with um, during the, your time with the um, uh, the Marines, but let me ask you this question, and I'll let you get into it if you want, of course. Uh, when you th- started to really dislike college, was there, at that moment in time, did you think about tech and coding as a potential possibility for you? Uh, or, or was it clear in your mind that you were you, you wanted to have some uh, excitement and, and, and action in your life, and 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 really only thought about joining the Marines? Like when did you have that kind of uh, interest at that moment in time, or not at all? Well, that, that's a hard no because I I'm 40, so you're talking about you know uh, 22 years ago. Yeah, like. Nobody was coding, right? Like only, yeah. you know, Bill Gates is about it. I mean, like, like it, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't big, right? I mean, like, people barely had computers back then. It was just, uh, was it like the, you know, what we call the, uh, the web 1.0 right before yeah, it crashed, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, the internet like, just you know, existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, like, I mean, like, the internet like just came out, yeah. <laughs> like, so everything was so brand new. So it, it, it it's uh, tech. De- definitely wasn't on my mind at all 22 years ago no were you a gamer at all or when I mean, you said you were not nerdy really at that time and where like where was computers computers in your life at that at that time video games so, video games. so my my mom actually bought me a computer when i was um 14 so you know ni- ni- 1996 my mom bought a computer for the family and uh i would tinker around with it and like Going. Do you remember what it was? Uh, what was that? Do you remember what sort of computer it was? I believe it was an e machine. Oh, I remember those. Yeah, like when Ludo, we're talking way back. E machines, yes. Was, it, it was an e It was kind of a PC, but not really a PC. Yeah, yeah. So I, oh, I, I, wow. I, it's funny, you just jarred my memory. I've not thought about that since I was 14 years old. I believe it was called an e machine. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I want to look it up. I'll look it up yeah. at some point. E machines. If someone, if, so, if that rings a bell for anyone on the chat, please Christmas send us pics or of e machines. But I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. All yes. right. Wow. So, so that was it, pretty much. Uh, and you were kind of playing and toying with it, but that was yeah. And I, I played a lot of video games. Um, you know, so it, it's it is funny. Uh, you know, now that I look back on it, I've always I've always been curious. So because in in order to operate in the tech industry you do have to have a, a high level of curiosity so i yeah. I, I think it's more of I've, I've been curious my whole life I, I i was the i was the why kid you know my mom tells me to yeah. do something. why mom <laughs> but why so if you have a the type of brain where you're always asking why that you that works excellent in tech yeah because and so a lot of questions that can be uh, and then by the way folks if uh you should look up chris on linkedin i'm, I'm kind of uh following your your journey here on linkedin so you joined the uh the marine corps and then you got deployed twice um mm-hmm. still from that tech standpoint where was that i mean was there anything that happens during that time with the marine corps that kind of led you to be interested in tech or was it just no because it's just pure you know action no, uh, stuff. So my 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 mos that stands for a military occupational specialty it's fancy yeah. word thing like my my job in the marine corps uh was communications yeah. um so i work with a lot of uh, cryptographic equipment um so i had a secret clearance but um still not thinking about technology or career in tech you know and at this point i'm you know i got out 2005 so i was 22 and i wasn't thinking um about tech at all yeah i wasn't i was even when you got out from the marine corps corps nope I, w- I wasn't thinking about it and i that that's why i love new camp so much and correct me if i'm wrong but i believe 76 percent of new camp students are uh um minorities yes um and i love the form that you built because what happens is that when you grow up in an environment and you don't you only can visualize what you what you see so if you don't see 
lawyers, doctors, dentists, engineers, and the environment that you grow up in, you know, as a child, you don't visualize that. When you're in high school, you don't visualize yourself being a scientist. You don't visualize yourself being a software engineer. You know, so it's not that a lot of people in certain um, areas aren't capable of being engineers. They just don't go into the tech industry because they don't see it. They don't, they don't see have people. the role models. Yeah, yeah they, they just, you know, so, um, yeah. If I would have seen it, I definitely would have been interested in tech a lot earlier in my life, but I just didn't see it growing up. People who look like me. Yeah, role models. You're right. I mean, when we uh, we have surveys in in the courses, and uh, it's always interesting to see. I think it's like 35 percent of our audience um, is Caucasian, uh, and then everything else is not. Uh, everyone mm -hmm. else is not. Um, so l let's talk about. How much do you want to get into those those I think four years in the Marine Corps and your two deployments? Do you want to talk about you know anything that comes to mind in terms of what you would like to share with the audience? Uh, yeah, so I actually got to wrestle in the Marine Corps, so that was fun. I got to do a lot of traveling with that, and I lived in Japan for a year. Oh, I lived in cool. Okinawa, Japan. I was stationed at Camp Hansen. Uh, beautiful culture, nicest people that I've ever came across in my life. Um, so that was that was a beautiful year spent in Japan. And then uh, from there, I was stationed on Camp Pendleton, uh, California. And uh, I blinked and I was in Iraq. Um, oh, crap. And yeah. then came, <laughs> did, did all that, fought the war in Baghdad in 2003 and came back to California for a short stint, maybe five or six months. And then. Went back over in 2004 like to fight the Battle of Fallujah. So that was... Wow. Uh, you were there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, wow. there, you know, and and, and then uh, we were scheduled to go back over like eight more times. And uh, Jeez. I said, well, if I go do that, that, you know, if I go back eight more times, there's only three things that are going to happen. I'm going to end up yeah. dead crazy or missing limbs so yeah. how about i just get out so <laughs> i decided to get out and, uh, you know so don't look back well uh, again thank you chris for your service um you must have been uh tough and and i'm glad you you were uh, you're the, the the clairvoyance i will say of of uh doing what you thought was right at the time uh and that and that you actually got to uh yeah to shift shift gears um you should, by the way, uh, for your uh, uh, interest in Japan, Zendra in the team is uh, has lived in Japan as well uh, as um, family. So I don't know if you got to chat with Zendra, but uh, you probably no, have I a lot to share about Japan. So um, 2005, you're out of the, the Marines. Uh, what, what happens then? Like, is that when you're like, okay, what am I going to do next? And maybe I should go into and try those computer things. Like, can you share a little bit of your journey? So, and, and I'm sure so, a ton of people, right, that get into the army or the Marines mm -hmm. are thinking about a transition. They're like, okay, what now? What is, what are my skills? What do I have to play with? Um, how did you solve all those challenges, internal kind of fears potentially, and, and, and find a path for yourself? So a lot of years went by of just having – random jobs like mm. I, I i did it i didn't um i didn't have anybody in my family who like i said was in tech or stem right it, and and yeah. and it's like you you do what the far vast majority of americans do you just go get a job and mm. you're you know I, I, I was just never thinking of a career and I was just working jobs. Right. right? Um, so that's why like on my LinkedIn and my resume is like, I don't put anything on my LinkedIn or anything on my resume that is completely irrelevant to technology. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if you worked at pizza hut or something, we were 25, like you don't put that on your resume. <laughs> like no, no recruiter cares that you worked at pizza. Hut, right. Yeah. So yeah, just a bunch of uh, just jobs. And actually what did it for me, Ludo, was it was 2019 and i had an epiphany and i said well wait a second what i'm doing isn't working and mm -hmm. 
I need to, um, I have a family, I have children. I actually just had uh, my third child, a little boy in December. So I, I told okay. myself back then that I need to do something that I, that I actually enjoy and I can mm -hmm. do it for the rest of my life. And I don't want um, my age to matter. Like, I don't want to, you know, well, I'm too old for this and my back hurts. So I really didn't want it to be anything physical. So I, I, I had a long talk with myself and I said, you know what? I've always been curious how computers work and, um, you know, how, how is software built? Like we use this stuff all the time. So I told my, I called my wife because I was out of town and I said, I'm going into the tech industry and I'm going to teach myself how to code. And I said, it's tech or bust wow. because I, I knew that I needed to make a change because um, I wasn't making a lot of money and I always knew that I, I was going to do something great and I always knew that I was capable of so much more. But my res the, the results that I was getting in life, it wasn't showing. Yeah. So I told myself, well, I'm not dumb. I think I need to do something different and I, I need to... Um, be a part of something where I don't get penalized for asking why, because a lot of people, yeah. if they ask why at work, they get in trouble by their manager or they get fired or they get written up. And I thought to myself, I like to ask why. So I just had the Shereka moment and I went on Amazon and I ordered a, a, a book called uh, data structures and algorithms with Python. I had no idea. What I was <laughs> I'm talking about I had zero idea what I was doing. Okay. And I bought a used laptop for $75. I was in Michigan, right? I told wow. my wife, I said, I'm buying a laptop, I'm ordering a book. And uh when I came back from Michigan, I sat down uh at a table and I was uh I was actually living with my in-laws. Oh, I don't want to cry. Oh, because take a moment. Check out all the people that are supporting you here on the chat. Uh, congrats, congrats, Brandon. That's so awesome. My daughter is downstairs watching this. Oh, yeah, she's here in, in 2019. I was living with my in-laws. I was making, I was making twelve dollars an hour. And I built my family a four hundred thousand dollar house because I learned how to code. That's awesome, Chris. Um, so maybe. tech saved my life. They saved my life and. I'm living up to my potential now and I'm doing great things. And, you know, I became an instructor with new camp and I told my wife, I said, um, I would be a great instructor for the company. And I don't know what this is going to be like. And I've never taught a class before and new camp is going well. And new camp just made me a career coach my company um they promoted me to be a scrum master and i just all because i was fed up and i was sick and tired of the results that i was getting I knew that i was i knew i was capable of so much but i knew something had to change so um yeah tech saved my life i'm sorry i i didn't think that was gonna no, happen apologize, Chris. You, that that was very touching um, um and I know it's pure joy what you're feeling right now in terms of what you've been able to accomplish. Uh, when I when I prepared for our conversation, I, I went to your LinkedIn profile and I saw uh, I saw what you wrote about yourself and what you want to uh, what you want to accomplish. Uh, I'll quote you from your LinkedIn profile. I decided to pursue the tech industry because I want to make an impact in the world and live a life full of purpose. Software has helped change the world in countless ways. And it is my dream to contribute to something bigger than myself. Um, and I think that's extremely inspiring. What you are trying to do for yourself and for others, but what you've lived yourself and how you're sharing it and how 
um, how you're inspiring others to do the same. So let's let's go back and let's kind of di dissect that journey, if you don't mind. And, and kind of the idea is to give the tools for the other people to kind of find their ways the same way you, you found it. And what's really interesting, I think it's you... Um, you really didn't know. You knew you you had something greater in you. Uh, you knew you had the tools, you had the IQ, but you didn't find at that time the outlet to express that. And then uh, it's funny that e-machine, I think at some point kind of was probably in your subconscious, right? Uh, yeah. I, I saw someone, I think, tag tagging us on, on Discord. There you go, e-machine. Uh, does that ring a bell? Let me actually share the screen here. Did someone send a, a picture? Yeah, of yeah. Does that ring a bell? Is that it? Oh, it was, hold on. It was a it, it was a green e. Yep, that's it. There you go. <laughs> it, was, it was it was it it wasn't that color. The actual um, the frame of it, the blue and and the white. Um, yeah. It was like a like a tan, but yeah, that that's the e, the green e. Yeah. That's e pretty cool. Um, so. You you bought a book on Amazon and you had no clue what the book was about. Absolutely. What did you no like, how did you go from because self taught is probably what everyone should strive for, us, right? Everyone should kind of, and, and at the time there wasn't that much, you know, of a YouTube, you know, playlist. Mm -hmm. um, how did you go from buying that book? And, let, and let, I mean, did you actually were able to read that book? Did it make any sense? So. How I got you, like, what was your progression? You know, I I got as far as uh, learning how to write "Hello World," yeah. right? <laughs> so I, I I I did a "Hello World," right? Print "Hello World" in Python, and you know, I showed my wife. I was like, "Look at this! I'm amazing! I'm going to build the next Facebook." God, but yeah. So um, two days later, my wife um, showed me her her phone, and in her Facebook news feed. Yeah, it's the Case Western Reserve University uh, boot camp, right? Full stack web developer boot camp. I have no idea what a boot camp is. Okay, and um, I look at it, and you know, it's talking about front end and full stack. I have no idea what this stuff is, and um, I told myself, "Well, what I'm doing isn't working." Mm -hmm. These random jobs, it's not working because I sat down with the pen and a paper and I just did math. I said, well, how much money do I need to make in order to get out of my in-laws house and also um, out earn inflation? Because that's truly the only way out of poverty and being broke. You have to out earn inflation. Mm -hmm. So I did the math. Um, and I said, well. Going to this boot camp can't hurt me. That boot camp was eleven thousand dollars. That's okay. That, that's one of the yeah. I, yeah, I applied it. for it and I didn't get approved. And uh fortunately, um my my in-laws are very supportive because they didn't want me in their house, right? Like I'm married to a <laughs> <laughs> uh you know, I I, I said uh you know I want to do this and I have no idea what it's about. But I promise that I put up a hundred percent, you know. So the next day, my my mother in law, she gave me her credit card, and she said, "You take this and you pay for it in full." And she said, "You can pay me back when you get into the tech industry." Yeah. She said, "Change your family's life." So, you know, shout out to my 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 in laws for doing that for me. And I tell these stories because you know I'm doing well now. Right. But it didn't look like this in 2019. Yeah. You know, it, 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 so, so, you know, now I'm good. Right. Like I'm okay. My wife cool. is also like, my wife is a technical product manager. Is she now? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we're good now. Right. But, you know, I like people to know things weren't always good. Right. If things were good and I wouldn't be living with my in-laws. Right. But here I am now. So you can be broke, busted and disgusted, but don't be defeated. And if you can visualize yourself being a software engineer or whatever it is you want to do, if you can see it, that's the universe telling you that you can do it. 
A lot of people are, want to thank your in-laws as well. <laughs> in-laws so. are heaven sent. So, and I want to, let's talk about, you know, that boot camp because just like you're saying, you, that was, you were not in a great place then. It takes a while to feel the confidence that you're actually making the right amount of progress. I'm, I, w- I will venture guessing that that boot camp was probably n- not an easy ride. Oh, uh, is- can you share, you know, some of the feelings that you had going through it? Like, did you have doubt during that time? How did you overcome those doubts? I mean, do you want to talk about that experience? So, um, fire hose with information. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's so much information. And when you don't have any background in tech, no HTML classes from high school, I mean, you're coming in like a newborn baby. It It, it, it is difficult. And um, I told my, but I think that things can be explained more in layman's terms. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a lot of people who teach uh who have youtube channels you know i i think that things can be broken down in simpler terms right um because it's not it's not rocket science it's a language i think a a lot of times you can just explain a piece of code and actually speak it in plain english yeah so you're right you can't break it down right so you know the, the way i teach i try to look at the way other people teach and ask myself, let me learn this. And now let me try to explain it to a five-year-old Yeah, because I truly believe if you, and this is the standard that I hold myself to. If you, if you're teaching something well, you should be able to explain it to a child. Um, or your grandma or your in-laws. Right. Or, you know, the, uh, you know, somebody who works on an assembly line, putting together boxes, yeah. you know, they, they should, you should be able to explain to them and come down to their level. Um, there's a lot of brilliant people who teach and they have this world full of knowledge, but what good does that do the world? What what good does it do the world if you can't communicate those thoughts? You know, you you, you have to have the ability um, to come down to people's level and speak to them. And um, that, I believe that's why boot camps are so difficult. Um, yeah, it's trying to do that, but then doing... Uh going into very complex um, topics as well. I will actually say you're doing a phenomenal job with your students. Uh, I'm looking at your dashboard here. Um, you, you've you actually taught 12 courses with us or more than a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and of 522 surveys, you're getting a astonishing uh, 4.89, let's say 4.9 out of five. That's pretty much, that's pretty not unheard of. Um, the level of feedback, the quality of the feedback and how appreciative your students are, are with uh, the way you're probably doing so well with them, which is breaking it down in very layman's terms. Um, so yeah, that's, um, they're lucky to have you. There is a debate right now on the chat. They want to know about the tree that's in your background. Um, and Sean actually is venturing saying that it's a ficus tree, but he thinks it's a fake tree. What can you say about this? So there's a uh, like a floral shop down the road. Yeah. And I bought it uh, when I moved into this house and it's cool and I water it and I just like it as a background. And it is real, Sean. There you go, Sean. This is a this is Not a real tree. this is a real tree with dirt in it. And, <laughs> so, I don't know what kind of tree it is. I, I thought it was cool, so I, I just bought it, and I have no idea what kind of tree it is. So it looks yeah. good. It looks good. Yeah. Um, uh, let's let's take a few questions. Uh, did you did you get a chance to read? I, I know there was a lot a lot of interaction here. Um, I don't know if you have questions for Chris. If you have questions for him, there's actually a few ways to ask your questions. One is. Type it in the chat, whether you're on LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook. We're going to see it here. Chris, you can see the, the chat, right? Yes, I can. I'm yeah. scrolling or, down to see if anyone had questions. Yeah. There's a funky way of doing it. 
So the chat is the regular way. If you want to do it the funky way, you follow that link, url.newcamp.co slash dial in. What's going to happen is you're going to join us right here on stage uh, with your mic, with your camera on, and we'll have a conversation. So you can do that as well. It's the funky way uh, of of uh, having a conversation with us. Uh, did you see anything that you wanted to uh, pick up in terms of question or comments maybe? Or we can go... Um, we can let go. me... I believe when we started, someone asked a, a question. Let me... Yeah, I remember. Yeah, it was more about... Yeah. Uh, um, someone... Had, it was about a... Uh, Char... Char38 asks, uh, I was told to do front end first. I saw it. Instead of back end yeah. due to job outlook, are you able to speak on this? Um, can Char38, Char can you rephrase that a little bit as far as like, can you give me some context? Like, what, what do you mean by due to job outlook? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah if you could rephrase that question, because I, I, I don't want to assume what you mean by job outlook. Because the way I'm um, defining job outlook may be different. Um, yeah, uh, we'll we'll wait for him to respond. And then a uh, comment from Chris: uh, E-Machines was acquired by Gateway, another brand that has gone fast. Gateway. I remember they were doing cheap but quality computers at the time, and then acquired by us Acer. All right, let's let's go back. Meaning, meaning, okay. okay, meaning, yeah. So if it. If it was me, okay, think of it like this. So if you have no interest, zero interest in being a dentist, okay, um, and this is me answering um, Char Char 38. If you have zero interest in being a dentist, you're probably not going to make it through dental school, okay? So just because uh front end you know from whatever wherever you gather the data if it's more saturated than back end but you truly love to see what happens on the screen when you write your code mm -hmm. going and doing back end will probably drive you insane yeah i don't want to work on the back i don't want to do back I, I like front end when i code i need to see it buttons and all okay <laughs> I, <laughs> I need to see what I'm coding. Um, so like I always tell my students, if, if you're a visual person, nerd out on the front end, do a front end course. Yeah. If you could care less about um, visualizations and the UI and whatnot, and you want to build databases and you want to learn all about, you know, data structures and algorithms and et cetera, et cetera, then you should work on the back end because when the times get hard, and it will get hard because coding is, is very difficult. And the better you get, you'll have to solve more complex problems. When times get hard, you want to be doing which end of the stack? Do you want you want to be doing the end of the stack that is uh it's intuitive to you? It, yeah. it, it it's it, it it you have a high level of interest in which end you're working on. So if you don't have a high level of interest in the back end. You have a high level of interest on the front end. Go down the front end rabbit hole and don't worry about the competition or if it's saturated. Your goal should be to be just laser focus and be the best damn front end developer that the country has ever seen. You want to focus on the right things. It's not about is it saturated or not, because you know what? Let, let's be honest, it's probably saturated with a lot of people who aren't even that good. Yeah. Because anybody could put front end web developer as a title on their LinkedIn. That doesn't mean that they know how to center a div or make a button blue, right? So I wouldn't worry about um, the competition. I would worry about you and, like I said, being the best front end developer you can be. I yeah, wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. When I, like, when I was, on your craft, make, be great at what you do and what you like, and, and, then, uh, and then you'll get a job. Um, this question is going to get back. Um, get us back on, you know, your journey. So the coding bootcamp was challenging like any coding bootcamp, uh, but you, you graduated. Uh, tell us about the time after your graduation. And when when was that? What, 2020 was it? I think 2020, 2021, something like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
smack right in the middle of the zombie apocalypse. I graduated. Yeah, there you go. March May, 2020. May, Something May, 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 yeah. May 2020. I, I had to finish the last six weeks of my boot camp online. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would commute. Uh, it was about an hour and a half commute to the college. Uh, Tuesday. An hour Wednesday. and a half? You were commuting morning and evenings an hour and a half to go there? Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday mornings. It was about an hour and a half commute a day wow. because it was it was tech or bust. I, did, yeah. I, did, I didn't care. I didn't care what yeah. I had to do. I, I, I didn't care what whatever it took. Whatever I was whatever I was running towards, which was the tech industry, I don't care how many mountains I had to climb. It was tech or bust. I was making $12 an hour. That's awesome. So, so tell us, like, um, you're graduating. You're in the middle of the pandemic. You're on the job market. How did it, uh, how did it happen for you? Like, uh, how long did it take you to get a job? Did do you have did you have any specific strategies? Um, yeah. Was it networking that made it for you? And and what was your um, first job like? So graduated in May, and I went through the career services, had a career coach, and there were certain things that this boot camp said that we have to do in order to be job ready for the market. LinkedIn, GitHub with 300 commits, profile picture on LinkedIn is professional, mm -hmm. um, networking with people, just all of these different things that they were trying to set us up with success. And we started the class let me circle back. We started with 29 of us, 17 of us graduated. I was the only one who had got the green check mark that I was job ready. Yeah. Because the our career coaches um, would, you know, they literally would give you like a check on your file. You're ready to hit the job market. And I was the only one in my class that did everything. Wow. It was like other people, you know, um, you know, they were younger and maybe not taking it that serious. For me, it was tech or bust. So I didn't mm -hmm. care about what anybody, what anyone was doing around me. I made sure that I wanted to get that green check mark. And I don't know if, it, you know, probably a little bit of luck, but I was also job ready according to through the boot camp. And um, fortunately for, for myself and my family, I got hired four days after my boot camp and I didn't even apply. Four days. Four days. That's huge. How did you I, get? How did you find? Did you just apply and, and I got know, an interview? Or? I never. I, I had a gentleman um, reach out to me on LinkedIn, and <coughs> um, you know, he's talking about, about the company and where they're located, and they were actually in Ohio. But he went on LinkedIn, found me, and you know, apparently. If I didn't do what career services said and have my yeah. LinkedIn dressed up, um, you know, he probably would have skipped over me. But I was coachable and I did exactly what career services said do. Yeah. Right. Because for me, once again, it was tech or bust. This is my theme. Whatever someone tells me to do. And this is the path of how you get into the tech industry. I didn't ask any questions. I didn't doubt anybody. I was coachable because I was making $12 yeah. an hour. So everything that they told us to do, I did it. And the stars aligned. And somebody reached out to me, and four days later, I got hired as a uh, React uh, engineer with the company. That's huge. Did you get a, a, an opportunity to ask that uh, hiring manager why you? Like, what what did you see in your resume, in your LinkedIn profile, maybe in, in his interaction with you that made it work for him? Yeah, what 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 they said was powerful, and I found this to be true. So it it it's it it depends upon actually it does it, small, medium, or large company. Here's my advice to everyone. I tell this to all of my students. You can be the most brilliant programmer, but if you're not a team player and mm -hmm. you don't possess certain intangibles and you have bad communication skills, then companies won't hire you because this industry tends to attract introverts, which is okay. It's okay to be introverted, but you know, this stereotypical visualization of you're going to get into the tech industry and have your hood up and the room is dark and you're going to code the matrix and you just want to be <laughs> alone. 
That is not true. You are going to have to work with teams of people. You're going to have to communicate. You're going to have to do pair programming. Mm -hmm. So companies are not just looking for your technical accoom. Companies are looking for people who have great attitudes that culture fits. This is what they're looking for. You know, um, people, they're doing behavioral interviews. You know, how would you handle this situation? They want to see how you communicate, how well you work with others. So I would actually, um, I don't mean to stray off from your question. I'm sorry. No, you're, was, you're right there. You're actually was, right spot on. Yeah. I was hired for my intangibles, yeah. for my ability to have empathy and express myself. It's not like they hired somebody out of a boot camp and they were expecting me to come in and, and you know, right? Like when mm-hmm. you get hired into the tech industry, they know you suck. Right? <laughs> Like you're, they're not, they're not expecting you to come in and, and make all of this change in the yeah. company and write a thousand lines of code a day. They're not expecting that. What they're looking for is your intangibles. Do they? Have, do you have a great attitude? Are you coachable? Mm-hmm. And when you go through career services with New Camp and you get a career coach, and you know your career coach says, "Hey, you need to do this to your LinkedIn. Are you doing it? Are you taking it serious? Because if you're not," Those are the things that are going to hurt you in these interviews that you get with companies. You know, you have to. Oh, be wow. Open. Yeah, it's it's uh, yes, yeah, soft skills. I mean, you have to have. Um, you need to be able to pass the tech interviews, but that that's not what gonna what's going to get you hired. It's what happens after that. It's so true. Um, there's a few questions here. Uh, let me answer that one, if you don't mind, from Sean. Hey, uh, does completing the back-end and front-end boot camps lower the cost of the full-stack course, or are those prerequisites? So uh, let me um, unpack this one. We have two major boot camps, actually three. Front-end and full-stack is kind of the same in the sense that full-stack is front-end, plus a four-week course on Node.js MongoDB Express. Backend is what we call actually really the Python with backend. That's a whole thing. It's like three months long, uh, and it teaches SQL, uh, Python, the cloud. Um, None of those lower the cost of anything, (laughs) if you want. And they are also not necessarily prerequisites. So you can take them in kind of any order, although we recommend to start with Python, backend with Python at this time. So there you go. That's the answer. Um, Any other? All right. Let me see. Someone asked me uh, what, what years was I in the... Oh, yeah. You're, that, yeah I, was, I, was in, I was in the Marine Corps um, from 2001 to 2005. Mm-hmm. And right. um, someone asked me, uh, how do you leverage education versus experience on your resume to get your foot in the door of your first coding job? I can't answer that one. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, someone reached out to me on LinkedIn, actually. And net, net networking is huge. Actually, one of the uh, pre-things they wanted us to do before the boot camp was to get outside of our comfort zone. And they recommended that we go to a meetup. Okay? Yeah. And th- this, this is what I mean as far as being coachable. So no one in my class did it. I asked everyone in the first day of class, did anyone go to a meetup? And they said, no, why would we do that? And let me, I went to a meetup at a cigar and whiskey place, downtown Cleveland. And there was a guest speaker. The meetup was uh, some nerds talking about the tech industry. I'm not even in boot camp yet. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not even in boot camp. The, the boot camp started October 2019. It's mm-hmm. September, right? Yeah, we had to do pre work before we like entered the boot camp, and a part of the pre work was go to a meetup, get out of your comfort zone, and just go network with somebody in tech. So I went to a meetup, and the guest speaker was a CEO at um, a tech company that's actually in Cleveland, and I met him, and I went up to him, and I said, "Hey, Andrew, nice to meet you. I don't know anything about code, but." I would like to um, talk to you after I graduate 
uh, this boot camp that I'm going to, you know, it would be nice to connect with you and, you know, talk with you after the boot camp is over. And uh, I was just bold. Yeah. Right? Like when you, you have to. You, you like, have to. There's no shame. Yeah. 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 Because once again, Ludo, I was making twelve dollars an hour. <laughs> Take a bust. It was tech or bust for me. So. <laughs> no, but hey, you know what? And and I think what you said earlier resonates as well when you're in those situations, right? As long as you present yourself as you know being down to earth, humble, uh, with empathy, you you are totally okay to be bold and. And really engage and and ask things of people if they feel like there's an opportunity for reciprocation. Like you're not kind of sucking me off my you know energy. You, I feel like you're gonna care for what I'm gonna tell you. I feel like you're gonna give back what I'm giving you. It's it's always that. It's a it's a it's a dynamic. It's um, yeah. I'm I'm I care about you. Please care about me, and we'll talk again in nine months. Um, and and uh, well, did you actually? That's a question now. Did you talk to Andrew after you graduated? I did, and um, he 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 wanted to hire me at his company. No, oh, this is see, this is huge. That's so. Just... So what happened was um, they wanted to hire me at the company, and I had meetings with some people, and it was just basically. Um, some miscommunications had happened because mm -hmm. there, there there was this gap. So I graduate boot camp, and I said I got I totally forgot about this. It's been a long journey, Ludo. <laughs> I got hired four days after my boot camp, yeah. but that gap in there, the gentleman who um who I spoke to at that meetup before I wrote one line of code. He said, I want you to work for my company. Okay. He knows I suck. Right. right. This guy with boot camp. Like he's not, he just, he liked me as a person. Mm -hmm. And this is why when you're a junior, it's important to have communication skills and just be a likable person. It doesn't mean be fake, be yourself, but yeah. some people do need to work on their attitudes. Right. Yeah. So, some, some miscommunications had happened and they didn't get my offer letter to me quick enough. And on that fourth day, I interviewed with this company and like they got me an offer letter the same day and I'm making $12 an hour. And I, I said, I, I have to go with this other company. Like I can't wait around for yeah. miscommunications. Yeah, so I took the offer with the other company, but yeah, because of that meetup before I even went to boot camp, a job was waiting for me after. Um, That's huge. Boot camp. There's a, Chris had a question for you, but I think we talked about you know that question was your interview process. It's not so much the interview process, right? It's it's everything that happens before you get an interview. It's the it's the relationship, it's the network that you've done. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to I want to talk about we've talked about the first job. And the fact that you had two offers. The first job is um, oftentimes when you're just starting, right? That's where you're like, um, you experience a ton of, uh, um, uh, uh, oh, not impersonation. What, I, what is the word? I'm, I'm Imposter for. syndrome. Imposter syndrome. That's right. Yeah. You have probably a ton of that. Mm -hmm. Let's actually get, let's accelerate. I know you probably had, but let's talk about your second job. Not a lot of people hear the stories of, how do you go from coding bootcamp, first job, that's kind of okay usually. Tell us about the dynamic around you getting your second position and your second job. And tell us about, was it similar or different from what happened before? So um, I was with that company for two years yeah. and um, I got laid off. They, they they laid off the front, they laid off the whole front end team. It was due to you know, they, they didn't get, you know, the round of funding that they were looking to get and whatnot. It was a small company, um, but I'm forever grateful um, that they took a chance on me and I was with it for two years and I learned a lot. And the first job is always the hardest. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you graduate new camps, boot camps, and, you know, you're applying at all these different places, you know, I mean, there's a lot of competition out there, um, but that's anything. 
right? But when you have that mindset, tech or bust, for me, it was tech or bust. I didn't care how long anything took. You have to have a mindset, tech or bust, because the first job will always be the hardest. The second job is easier because now you have experience. So with the second job, I had a a local recruiter reach out to me and he had some um, some local companies uh you know they they were looking for a front end developer and he has had a good relationship with the company so that the second job happened fast after we've been laid off i think i was out of work a total of like two months yeah um you know going through the interview process and they had to interview other candidates and ultimately what actually got me hired even for the second job communication yeah intangible a likable person because yeah. anyone can study for a technical test or take a technical test you know some companies test for data destruction algorithms some companies don't um you know the particular company that i work for you know everyone is absolutely amazing high levels of communication they were looking for someone that they can communicate with and would be a good team player Mm -hmm. because you can teach the tech this, yeah. is, this is what I was told on both companies that I got hired at. They said, we can teach the tech, but what we can't teach is character. Mm-hmm. Right? So. Yeah, that's a great um, one. Um, yeah. I think I saw Frank pop up. Uh, Frank has a, a question here. There's a bunch of questions, actually. Maybe we should spend a little bit of time trying to answer them. Um So one question here is, there we go, uh, from CWill1013. Um, I've completed the Code Academy free HTML. Should I pay the $60 for the certification in that prior to the full stack bootcamp? If you've completed it already, I don't know that you want to pay 60 bucks just for a piece of paper. Uh, if you have the skills, I think that's just good enough. Um, I don't know that people care too much about the paper, uh, the certificate. It's certainly nice to be able to advertise it or you know co- talk about it on on LinkedIn. Um, but I don't know that it's worth the sixty bucks if it's just for that paper. I don't know what you think, Chris. Yeah, it, it, a, a certificate isn't um, something that isn't going to. That's not going to wow a recruiter yeah. on your LinkedIn. It's, oh, wow, they got a certificate. So did the other 136,784 people who got the same certificate. Uh, what, what What's impressive is what did you build with what you learned? What, what did you build? Yeah, that's right. We're interested in what did you build with what you learned? The paper means nothing. So instead of posting <clears throat> on your LinkedIn, this certificate what if in, in in place of that you show some amazing project that you built that's right html the project is far more impressive than a certificate yeah post a short video demo of your project and what it does um that that could speak um way more than than your certificate there's a, a quick question here from curtis uh, how do we access career services uh, and chris uh, very recently has accepted to join us as a career coach I, on top of also being an instructor with us, when you graduate, uh, Curtis, from front end and or full stack, you'll be actually matched with a coach. So it could be Chris, it could be another coach. Uh, and so that's how you really start your career services. You you match with a coach, you schedule time with them, uh, you have a conversation. On top of that, we have additional career services that we offer. We have a job board. Um, there's access to a four-week job hunting course. Um, there's We have partnerships as well with companies. Uh, hiring is slowing down, uh, that's for sure. So um, yes, it's, not, you know, it's not like it was last year, uh, but we, we do have those partnerships that help as well. Can I, I hope. Can, can yeah, I go for it. Time to that little, so you look at the tech news and you see, you know, Microsoft's letting go of people and, and Twitter and fit all hundreds of thousands of people being laid off. And those same people are in the market, which like saturates the market. And these people are really good, right? They already have tech experience. But just think to yourself, if you could fast forward in five years, 
like what's the alternative mm -hmm. right like learning how to code is one of the most by far probably one of the most like important things we can do like in humanity right now right the software is changing the world it has and it, it, it will it will only continue to so learning the skills now when people decide to drop out of the tech chase and drop out of the market and you're still there in the ditch writing the code building the projects pounding away well eventually all the people that decided to drop out of the tech industry but here you are you're yeah. going to get your shot but if you quit you'll never get your shot and you have to ask yourself what is the alternative yeah 12 bucks that an hour I was making twelve dollars an hour. There was no alternative. I don't yeah. care if it took me three years to get a job in tech. I was gonna. I was going to be in the tech industry. There was no doubts in my mind whatsoever. And I don't care how long it took, because you can change your entire life if you just have patience and keep learning and keep building stuff. Yeah. So true. Hey, let me take a question from Dan here. Um, did you have or do you have 7 year old students at New Camp? Right now, I don't know, but I want to share something with you, Dan. Um, let me... That's funky. I only see two screens here. That's okay. So let me share a... Uh, hold on. Frosty code... Uh... You asked who inspires me, my children, yeah. because because my children can't eat excuses. So I wake up fired every day wanting to reach my potential because I have three children. My children inspire me. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dan, uh, type in Lori. We've actually had a write up about Lori. She um, studied as a uh, she studied as a student, then became an instructor as well with us. Uh, reach out to her on LinkedIn. Uh, but she'll she'll be able to answer your question better than I would. Um, and there, you're very welcome to join or anyone who's uh, uh, in your in your age bracket. Um, all right, that's being said. Uh, that was another question that I found really interesting for you, Chris, as well, uh, to try to answer. Nathan, regarding... I'm 40. You're 41. I'm I'm 40. So. Uh... You are a young whippersnapper. 41 is not old. <laughs> Neither is 70. Dan, I'm, Dan, when I'm say, I'd go for it. Don't, yeah. you, did, did, you, you don't want to doubt yourself. Your internal dialogue is important. If you tell yourself you can't do something, you can't do it. I can't be a dentist. I don't want to work in people's mouths. Can't do it. Guess what? I will not be a dentist. But if you tell yourself tech or bust and you mm -hmm. get out, get out of your own way, when you get out of your own way, that's when the magic happens. Yeah, very true. Jacob wants to know if your military background had made a difference for you um, being in the tech industry or wanting to get in the tech industry. What lessons did you learn in the military that could have helped you, you think? Um, mindset. Um, yeah. De definitely, you know, having a military background, I I look at things from a different perspective, um, you know, so that is a an intangible strength. I have my, my mindset from being in the military, you know, so I try as um, much as possible to to let people know that I tell my students, I go, look, um, you know, this stuff is hard. I would be doing my job if I told you it was easy. But, and then I go on my rants, trying to motivate them and inspire them and just being mentally strong because there's too many YouTubers out here that make coding and being in the tech industry seem like it's all rainbows and unicorns. And it's <laughs> not. It is not. This stuff is hard. Okay. There will be days you want to pull your hair out, but you breathe and you meditate and you have patience and just realize that feeling never goes away. So you do have to be mentally tough when you want to learn how to program for a living. You have to you have to develop pace, be patient with yourself, you know, 
breathing techniques. Like it's not like don't look at those people on YouTube and make it seem like that you're not gonna have bad days and want to pull your hair out. Imposter syndrome is real. You're gonna work with brilliant people. I mean, it's it's uh I don't like videos like that when they make it seem like programming is amazing and it it's hard. They right? analyze a Twitter <laughs> and look at those offices and yeah, yeah. like you know, <laughs> look at Starbucks by the lake with the laptop with their feet yeah. kicked up. Like it's not like that. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we're already uh, at, the, at the top of the hour. Um, uh, oh, uh, let's see, a few questions. Do you practice lead code? Have no. you done lead code? No. Okay. No. I mean, as you said, right? You can be a great coder, but you may not just you may you may not be hired just on your tech skills. Yeah. So, so it's, it's if, 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 yeah, really quick. You you don't want to. Leak code for 20, 30 hours a week. But you have a blind spot in your intangibles. Because like I said, you can be the best programmer ever. But if you can't communicate during that interview and, and, and be likable, all that leak code doesn't matter. Hey, Chris, I think we're going to end on this note, that uh, a text that just popped up. <sighs> <laughs> Hi. Hi, Adrian. Uh, thank you for allowing your dad to uh, spend this hour with us. It was a wonderful time. I really, really enjoyed uh, having you on the show, uh, Chris. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing right now and, and what you want to accomplish in life. Uh, thank you for sharing your journey with us and with the audience here. Um, there was a question. How many uh, campfires have we done? We've done 50 before this one, but this one was particularly emotional and, and, and exciting and interesting to, to see. Uh, they're all on YouTube, so you can check them out. Chris, any um, word of wisdom, any, any last word that you want to tell the audience here uh, who's been uh, listening to your, your, your experience and your, your journey? Believe in yourself and don't quit because... Mm -hmm. We we are only on the planet Earth once. And as we grow older, you don't want to look back and ask yourself, where would I have ended up if I didn't quit? Mm -hmm. So don't quit. Tech or bust, baby. Tech or bust. Thank you, Chris. Thanks again so much. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great uh, day, yeah. weekend. Say hi to your wife and daughter and other kids. I know you have... Uh, my mother uh, actually just Stephanie Cosby. That that that's my mother. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at yeah. that. That's Bye, awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, looking forward to chatting with you on on uh, Discord and uh, continuing the. Thank uh, you the for having me. Bye, Take everyone. Care, everyone. See ya. Bye.